Thank you so much, Dumi. Now, as the second wave hit, we were faced with the adjusted level three lockdown. Our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, mentioned that we should not lose focus and turn a blind eye to violence and abuse towards women and children. With this in mind, today we chat to Melina Rousseau, founding director of Women Lead Movement, who will, who will be discussing the legal negatives and positive aspects of gender-based violence. Melina, welcome back to the show. Awesome to be back. Thank you very much for having me. Very crucial conversation that I love to con to have throughout the year. Um, I think that it no longer needs to stay within 16 days of activism and it's something we need to touch base with throughout. So if we just were to start with what we experienced during lockdown, I mean in the more harsher, higher levels of lockdown we experienced a spike in gender-based violence within the households. But now it seems though as much as we are in level three, adjusted level three lockdown, these numbers are just not dropping. Why do you think this is so mm. you see gender-based violence and femicide in south africa have reached crisis proportions long before COVID and the associated lockdown regulations um, obviously it has been exacerbated due to the lockdown regulations due to the very uncommon circumstances that we found ourselves in but let me tell you gbv will continue to rage long after the lockdown regulations have come to an end why because it is a pervasive and a systemic and a complex problem and we need a holistic approach or plan to deal with it. Now, I think the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide might just be our silver bullet mm. to deal or to not actually eradicate, but maybe reduce gender-based violence. But at this moment in time, we have not began with the implementation of the plan. Now, if I have to mention very briefly two or three things that I think if we can do it now mm. and start effecting change immediately, it would obviously, we will see a reduction in GBV. The first thing is our focus on prevention work. Now, I understand we need shelters. I understand we need services and treatment for, for victims of gender-based violence. But we also need to focus on how are we dealing um, with the toxic mindsets, attitudes and behaviours that lead to violence. So prevention work is important. The second aspect that I would like to mention is the fact that GBV is a symptom of gender inequality. If we don't deal with the system of inequality in economics, in politics, society, health, education, we are not going to eradicate it. And very lastly, political will. Is the money and the human resources being spent um, in order for us to address this issue? Topical, topical, especially when it comes to gender-based violence, all the three points that you have raised. But this holistic approach that you have touched base with, towards the end of every single year, we experience 16 days of activism, mm -hmm. something that we are loud and proud about here on our platform, but something as well that has different themes. And last year, we experienced the Do Not Turn a Blind, uh -huh. to not turn a blind Eye campaign. Now, can you just tell us about this campaign that, that encourages South Africans not to look away? Absolutely. So that campaign was initiated by UN Women and adopted by governments across the world, including civil society organizations like my organization, Women Lead Movement. I love the campaign because it doesn't only focus on the victim, but it focuses on the people that the victim knows. Mm -hmm. The neighbor, the family member, the friend, the work colleague, the church congregant, everyone knowing that this person is being abused and brutalized at home, but they are not doing anything to change the situation. Are they seen as accomplices? I love that question because I always used to say that they are accomplices, but let me tell you, there's some good news. So last year, there was the Domestic Violence Amendment Bill that came out and all civil society organizations was asked to give inputs. We also gave inputs. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a very special amendment that's going to be brought, and I really, I really actually hope that uh, that parliament is going to pass it it says that if an adult knows of another adult that is being subjected to domestic violence they are obligated mm -hmm. to go and report the matter to the police and to the social workers failing which they will be guilty of a criminal offense now obviously people lots of groups are coming out and saying no this is ridiculous Absolutely. it's taking away the discretionary capacity of the victim uh, you know to decide whether or not they want to you know lay the complaint or not mm -hmm. i'm saying radical laws are necessary GBV is reaching crisis proportions, or have reached crisis proportions. We need radical laws that is now going to force the hand of society to act. Because society have been apathetic. They have not done what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So this law is basically forcing society to not look away. Taking responsibility beyond the day-to-day, -day, beyond what we've experienced thus far. I think that this definitely sends trickles down everybody's spine. But something else that's also quite interesting that we have seen trending when it comes to gender-based violence are victims taking matters onto their own hands, going onto social media, and now shaming their abuser. First of all, what are those implications? Is that something that victims should be doing when it seems as if the law is not about, uh, on your side? Is that okay to do? Let me tell you, this is a very contentious issue okay and the jury is out 
it's 50-50. The public is split 50-50 <laughs> on this. So let's, for me, I think I would contextualize both. I will say what is the pros and the cons of both of them. So let's look at the positives. Women coming out. I mean, for eons, people have been telling them not to say anything. Now they come out, now we're telling them not to say anything. Yeah. We should applaud women that is coming out with these stories. They feel empowered, they feel liberated, and it's also a sense of education because they're educating other people that has not been in situations of gender-based violence. They can see the signs, the impact of GBV. It's a beautiful thing and we should encourage them. However, there's a different side to the coin. Yeah. We live in a country where there's laws and there, is, there needs to be respect for the rule of law. There needs to be responsibility, there needs to be discernment and there needs to be accountability. Now, let's say, I'm going to sketch different scenarios because it is co quite complicated. Let's say the lady has already gone through uh, or the victim has gone through the court mm. processes. The perpetrator is found guilty, you know, mm. she's, got, she's got the justice and, uh, you know, she can tell a story. But what about the lady that has not uh, yet later complaint. The, the perpetrator has not been charged um, and so forth. So case of defamation can be brought against uh, you know people like that. Mm. They can lay a case of criminal injuria against someone that you know puts their name out on social media etc. Wow. Lots of components but uh, I think at the next moment we'll we'll talk about more about that. Yeah it yeah. seems as if we'll have to we're forced to in this moment <laughs> take this conversation onto our social media platforms because indeed it is vast it is very complex yes. but thank you so much Melina yet again for stopping by it seems as if you know looking at both sides of the coin that the, the conversation just can go on yes. but we definitely do, definitely do encourage you to engage with us on those platforms. Now women and children have the right to live without fear. If you know anyone or yourself have experienced gender-based or sexual violence, call the SA National GBV Helpline on 0800-150-150. Now on social media, ladies, this one is for you. Please do fill in the blanks. I am blank. Now I want all of those affirmations, all that self-talk, all that positiveness to be coming through on our social medias. Who do you want to see yourself becoming in 2021? And use that hashtag Afternoon Express. After the break, we'll be touching base with Cassie from Afriderm.